What's going on everyone and welcome to Digital Perspective. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we can have, create this really nice components animation. Uh, and you can see on the right hand side, it has this really nice little blue to red gradient just going on on the left uh, right hand side of it. So we're going to try to create this inside of Figma. Uh, yeah, let's roll the intro. Right, so the first thing we need to really do inside of Figma is Pretty much get the buttons in the component set up you can see here what i've done is i've just extrapolated the colors from the actual artwork um credit to dash for this one he's the one who created that original animation which we're trying to replicate here um, so yeah so let's go ahead and try and replicate the buttons first so the first button we're trying to create is the component button and that one is just simply a text button with an icon on the left hand side for the icon i'm going to use a Font awesome for this. Let me just zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So basically all that does is if I type in the word sort and if I come in here, so you can see everything. So if I type in the word sort and inside my font on the right hand side, if I go to font awesome, select the solid free ones and you can see it creates a component for me. Right. Uh, so yeah, once I've done that, I'm going to select it both. I'm going to hit shift A right? or I can right click it and add an auto layout. What that does is it allows me to kind of have a nice little uh, um, alignment with everything. I'm just going to rename this to main button there. And let's just add a few styles to it. So let's add a few padding from left to right. So let's go about, I'd say, 70. And for the up and down, let's go about 50. Once I've done that, I'm going to add some radius, border radius. Now, obviously, you can't see it yet. But if I add a fill color, you can see that. So I want it to be about, let's say, 30, I'd say. And I'm going to remove the solid color for now because I don't want to um, duplicate that. So the first color style we need to use is this one, right? So it's got that kind of gray background with this nice solid inner shadow. Click on my main button and hit the fill tool, grab the color and the eyedropper tool, hit that, scroll down. And you can see on the bottom right hand side, you can see the effects panel. So we're going to drop that. And instead of drop shadow, we want it to inner shadow. And the settings for this are quite simple. Put that there. Uh, we do not want it to blur. We want a solid line. And obviously we don't want it black. We want it white. Now you can adjust the components of these buttons are entirely up to you uh, whenever you're creating your own ones. I think we're going to be focusing more heavily on the actual uh, animation of it in a second. So I've got my first component. I'm going to turn that into a component at the top there. Once I've done that, I'm going to click it again and turn it into a variant. So now you can see I've got two versions of the button. So I'm just going to create some space between them so you can see them both. Perfect. Right. So once I've done that, I'm going to anim uh, style the hover state. So I'm going to click on the blue, uh, this sort icon, and I'm going to turn it into this kind of blue. And that's it. That's all I want for my hover animation. I'm going to go to prototype on the right hand side, click on that. And now you see these blue uh, circles on the uh, up, down, left, and right. You just want to grab the down one and drag it down to the bottom one. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it on click. Um, actually, no, we want it doing it on hover while hovering. We want to smart animate it. Yeah, 800 milliseconds should be fine. And that's it. So now we've created the main button. What we want to do now is we want to create the second one. Okay. And the way to do that is hit the text button and we want to call this first one profile now it's remembered my font awesome so let's just change that back to enter and we want to turn that back into semi bold actually you know what let's just turn that into bold so it's a little bit different same thing right click add an auto layout so now we've got the padding and everything again so we had the other one as 70 and 50 at the top now for this one on the fill tool, we want to change that. So we're going to use this secondary color here. And we also want to change the color of the font. Um, so if you double click on that and inside the fill tool, grab the eyedropper tool and we want it to be this color here. Same thing with the border radius. We have this at 30, so we'll have this also at 30. Once we've done that, I'm just going to rename this to inner button. 
And the same thing we did with the other one, we're just gonna go right to the top here, create a component and create a variant. So we click it two times. So now we have two uh, of the buttons there. I'm gonna create some space again. And then drag this down. So now what we wanna do is we just basically wanna color in the hover effect. And what I want for that is, I click on the button, the fill is actually gonna be this slightly uh, washed out gray. And the font color, we want that to be the blue. So if we click on the blue there, perfect. So this will be our hover state. Same thing again, top right hand side, click on prototype, and then the bottom arrow, drag it down. And we wanna change this, you can see here, we wanna change it from on click, we want it to while hovering, yeah? Remember to do that. So once that's done, again, smart anime, 800 millisecond is fine. And that's it. So if I show you what these two button states do currently, so if I drag the inner one out, drag the pro components one in, so now we have the main and the second one. And if I click play, so you can see this one's just working as intended on a hover state. And this one I have to hover, again, works perfectly fine. Now we think 800 millisecond might be a tad bit too slow. I'm gonna go back into my main component, click on the prototype and change that to 300 millisecond. I'm gonna do that same with the other one. Perfect, so now if we go back, it's a lot quicker. Awesome. So now that we have that, what we're gonna do, let me delete these two buttons here. Now we're gonna actually go ahead and build out the actual drop down menu. The way to do that is, if you're in your layers button here on the left hand side, see that? If you're in your layers, just click on assets and you should now see two new buttons there, which is the main button and the inner button. And we're gonna click and drag the main component out first. Make sure we're in our design tab. And then instead of actually dragging the profile, the inner button in next, what we're gonna uh, create this into a component first. So same thing we did earlier on at the top. I'm gonna click on that, create component, and we wanna add a variant. The reason is we're working in kind of a hierarchical mode, and that way we'll, it will allow us to make sure we have the ability to change things later on if we need to. Um, so if I want to change the, the black color for the profiles, it changes it throughout everything, which is pretty useful, I think. So this button here is gonna be our main stage. So before we create our second one, actually, let's do some edits to this one. And what I wanna do is I wanna have this black border around it. So I'm gonna add some padding and let's go to fill it turns into i think it will be black yeah let's do black and then we want to go to the border radius and just round off that corner there might want a little bit more of a pattern so let's say maybe 20. yeah 20 is nice let's go for 20. actually let's do 15. 20 is a bit too thick there Right, so now that we have this, we can click on that, and you can see this little plus button here. If you click on that, that basically adds a variant. I can just drag that to the left-hand side. Oh, I've created multiple duplicates, don't need that. There we go, so we should only have the two. Now for this next one, we wanna now go ahead and drag in our profile on top of this. Now it does this really weird thing where it pushes it to the left or the right-hand side of it, and that's simply because if I click on the button, if I go to the layers, you want to click on the variant option there. You can see on the right hand side, you see how the arrow is selected onto diagonal or horizontal. We want it down to vertical. And what happens when I do that is it pushes the button down. Right now, again, there's no gap. Here's the gap. We want to make it the same. So we say about 15 there. And then we can pretty much click on the profile button, control C, control V, and we can add as many buttons as we want inside the drop down. Now the interesting thing is you can see the profile button is not actually stretched to the edges. It's actually just stretched within the, the limit. And the way to solve that is if I push this and push this there, you want to double click on the profile. And on the left hand side, you see here where it says hug content. You want to make sure that says fill content. We want to do the same for the other one. Click on that and fill content. So that basically pushes it to the side. Now, if your text is on the center, you can fix that by just clicking the left there. Do the same there. Oh, let me just show you where's the, yeah. So it originally was on the center, but if you click on left, it basically aligns it to the left, right? And that's it. So once we've done that, 
all we now need to do is we think about any animation that we want to do so if i click on prototype click on this button and drag that blue arrow to the next one and i want to change it on click i want to change it from this variant to this variant the smart animator i think 300 is a bit too fast let's go 500 and we'll click ok now also bear one thing in mind when we're actually open the drop down remember this component has to change right so if i go to my design tab you can see under the properties it's set to default but i want it set to the second variant which will be essentially the hover state to show you what that all looks like i'll go to my assets drag in my main button um oh i think i've named them too similar to each other this is what i'm going to do i'm going to name this drop down so now I know which one I need, which is this one. Like that there. And now if I go back to the prototype, if I click on that, you can see it pushes the um, the buttons there. Now it doesn't actually go back, but that's good because I haven't set a return animation. The way to do that is if I click on, yeah, and make sure I'm in my prototype, click on the main component, and then just literally drag the arrow back. That's it, don't change anything. That's all you need to do. And if I click on it, it closes. And obviously the hovers still work as well intended. Click on that, closes it, click on that, and it's all there. Perfect. So now what we want to do is we want to try and add that animation that we saw on the right hand side, that kind of gradient effect, right? And the way to do that, very easy. First, let's create the gradient. I'm going to grab two circles. It doesn't have to be anything special. It could be any shape you want. It could be a square, a rectangle, a triangle doesn't really matter just create two shapes slightly overlap them and then select the first one change it to whatever color you want so i'm going to go for a nice red at the bottom and then for the top one i'm going to go for a nice blue just have like a nice contrast between the two and then select them both and again on the left hand side uh, right hand side you can see under the effects click on that and then instead of drop shadow where are we drop shadow you want it to layer blur okay now with the layer blur, what that does is if I select the blur, I just, just literally just go crazy on the blur there. You can see it does mix them together in a nice mesh way, right? You can see that. So now that I have these both, I'm going to select both of them, right click, and I'm going to group them, group the selection. Once I've grouped the selection, I'm going to drag it so that it starts to sit uh, inside the components. Now, if it doesn't let you put it inside the main button what you want to do go to your layers section and find out where you need to go so i know i need to go into the default variant so i'm going to open the default variant and zoom in so you can see it's better i know it has to go in here so i'm going to rename this just go radiant i know exactly what i'm dragging i'm going to drag that inside the main button now it does this really weird thing here where it literally puts it on top of each other which we don't want so on the right hand side, you can see the little button there, which is absolute position. If you click that, then it puts it in a place where you can put it pretty much anywhere you like. Um, but the, the important thing is you have to make sure you stay within the boundaries. Otherwise, if you drag it too far out, it, it goes outside the boundaries again. You don't want to do that. Um, one way you can save yourself from doing that is once you start dragging, if you hold the space button, um, they, not the space button, I beg your pardon. If you hold the shift button, um that should also allow you to stay within the borders but we don't want to do that so what i'm going to do now is i want to position my gradient again you can see it's always trying to get trying to get outside the um the, the circle which is going to be difficult to position so I'm push that there i'm going to use the i'm going to use the coordinates on the right hand side position is where i want Okay. a little bit more and then i'm just going to push it all the way to the top so it's outside of view right so now it's completely gone out of view um but you can still see the gradient button there so what we need to do is if you select the actual button you can see the clip content on the right hand side if you click that basically that just clips the content um for the main button but you want to make sure you do that not on this one actually you want to make sure you do that on the default button here you want to do it on the overall thing so now if i click on clip content you can see the <clears throat> excuse me you can see the um uh, the red gradient has disappeared perfect 
So now we're going to grab that gradient, Control C, Control V, so we have another one. We're going to open up on the right hand side. You can see we're going to open up the second variant. In fact, I'm going to call this um, property one uh, open. Let's call it open. Yeah, so we know where that is. And I'm going to drag the other gradient inside that. Right, same thing. Remember, click on the main button and you want to click clip content. Yeah, awesome. So now that the gradient's there, we have both gradients there, which want to make sure that we position the second one wherever we want. So I know that I want the second one to come down all the way to the bottom. Push that down. I just want it to really affect the edges only, actually. So I'm going to push it down, 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 down. So that it disappears there. Right. That's it. So now if I take a look at our animation and close the button, you can see how the animation, uh, the gradient comes on the left hand side. Right. It's a bit tad too fast. I think we can reduce that by uh, reducing the animation speed. So if I click on the prototype and click on that, so let's say maybe 800,000 or 800 milliseconds, sorry. 800 millisecond. And that will be a little bit more easier, right? But there's one thing if you've, I'm not sure if you've caught it really quickly, you'll notice that the gradient actually sits on top of the profile buttons, right? We don't want that. We want it to sit behind everything. So this is where layering is very important. So on the second button, make sure we're back into our design tab. On the second uh, variant, you want to make sure that the gradient here is sits at the bottom, right? And what that does is if I close that, um, oh, no, not that bottom, sorry, put it right at the top. Then what that does, it's basically then sits behind all the buttons there. Um, now, the only reason it's sitting inside or on top of this is because we do not have these two buttons inside the main component now the way to fix that if you want you can copy these two buttons go inside here and add them to uh, the main component make sure you put the arrow down and then for these two you just want to basically hide them and then put the gradient at the top so now the order is zoom in here push down a little bit perfect so the order has to be the same gradient main button inner inner gradient main button inner inner as long as those two are exactly the same what you should find is you should find that the button actually will now officially sit behind it um but yeah that's really it but again guys if you do like it please make sure you do like it subscribe and the channel and hit that notification bell um hopefully this tutorial has been enjoyable my name is khaled and i'll see you on the next one Peace.